just a, a couple of questions. One, and I know that um, AI is a big topic, not just here, um, but it's, it's become uh, culturally socialized now. People have a lot of questions and don't know where this is headed. And, and I think that uh, for me, you know, sort of dividing this into from a military context and more of the commercial application, and that's, we're still trying to figure that out and get a lot of information. But on the military side, obviously, civiliza civilizations have come and gone based on, you know, if somebody else gets a better technology and um, moves ahead militarily. So it, it's a very important race uh, that we're engaged in. <clears throat> From your perspective, has the Department of Defense done enough to integrate AI into our um, various platforms? Uh, Senator, I'll, I'll, I'll really... And I guess what does that look like, too, is probably a follow-up. Senator, where, where I'll really focus on are those areas that are, that are within, within my responsibility, really looking at how we think about cybersecurity. Uh, there are a couple key areas in there that we've done really well in terms of across each of the services, the big data platforms that we built for cybersecurity, we built them on a common framework. Uh, one of the things uh, that, that the uh, Congress authorized and the department enabled was also a, a weapon system inside of U.S. Cyber Command called Unified Platform that allows us to see that data across the entire department. So we've got some foundational components in place. I think our next challenge, and, and we owe you back a study by the fall, is what does that roadmap look like to acceleration and use of these technologies to be able to give us the greatest advantage, give our analysts and our defenders the greatest advantage, and allowing us to scale, and then doing it in a way that you're very comfortable with. And I guess, you know, we've, we've obviously, um, recently China has hacked um, our systems, and this is not the first time, it's not the last time. But one question is, <clears throat> I guess just want to try to get at, do you feel like a, um, a layered, a uh, multi-vendor approach gives us um, more protection. I mean, one of the concerns that I have is if you have a single vendor, um, you have less competition, you have less, you know, again, layers of protection. I just want to get your, your thoughts. I'm not trying to, this isn't a trick question. I'm just trying to get your, your, your feeling on this, your thoughts on this. So when we look at, uh, Senator, from a cybersecurity perspective, we, we do have a blended series of, of vendors that we, we leverage. Uh, and, and from that, that allows us to really play to strengths. And when we think about where we're going in the cloud architecture of the department, multiple vendors uh, to be able to leverage their inherent strengths based off mission. And, and I think that inherently, how we then grow those partnerships from a cybersecurity perspective is both a strength to us and to those respective companies. And do you see your role, I mean, we've talked a lot about, it's really a focus of a lot of my questions in the Indopaycom. Uh, you, you mentioned this previously, and a lot of times when you ask questions this late in the game, they get they're, <laughs> you know, sort of ask them again. But um, that relationship, um, your resources, you feel like you have the resources to be fully integrated there, because to me, those are where our biggest threats are from and will be from. Senator, the support to Admiral Ocalino, we just completed Cyber Command and Indopaycom staff talks to ensure of our alignment and how we collaborate to ensure that, that, that we, from a cyber perspective, help them set the theater. And that includes our partnerships and aligning to make sure that Cyber Command is helping enable the partnerships that Indopaycom feels is essential. There are also some specific capabilities they're asking us for. Those have been authorized and, and by Congress and by the department and have put us in a position to be able to deliver those capabilities for Indopaycom. You and I had a conversation, and um, obviously I expressed to you that um, a desire to, to get some of this divisive politics out of, out of our military. And, um, and I think we had a very good conversation about that of best and brightest and merit-based and that where our focus should be and get some of this divisive stuff out. Also, I do want to mention that um, you don't have to comment on this because this is not related to you specifically, but there are some in the intelligence community, I think, that have um, viewed their role as determining what people can hear and see and think. CISA, specifically, um, has engaged in, in part of a censorship enterprise working with big tech to shut down speech. And I don't actually think that's debatable anymore. It's, those are the facts. And so I would just, uh, um, a word of caution to, to be very aware of that. Obviously, you're dealing with real threats. Um, but I think the First Amendment is very important. If we are who we say we are and we believe in this robust marketplace of speech, people should be able to have opinions, even if they're ones that you don't agree with. And I don't think 
Um, the government or the intelligence community's role is to decide those things, let the American people decide that. So that's just something I think for you to keep your eye on is some people view their role as the decider of who gets to hear what, and I think that's the wrong approach. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Senator Smith.